Hi everyone, it's Auntie K, Yard Sales Arena, here with Uncle Vinti, the Vintage Tool Man, with our yard and estate sale finds for the weekend of August 22nd and 23rd, 2015. For the past year or so, it's been slim pickings in our area, but things have picked up the past few weeks and I want to show you what we found. I'm going to start off today with some finds from the Goodwill. I've been ragging on the Goodwill for a while now because their prices are either exorbitant or they just don't have anything. But look what I found. This piece of Imperial Carnival glass and the matching sugar bowl with the lid was at the Goodwill. This was just sitting on a shelf. Usually anything they think is of value, they put in the case and mark it really high. But these two items, just like this, were on the shelf. So I picked them up. One was six, one was eight. Uncle Vindy, can you look on there and see that? Be nice if I could actually see it. Imperial Carnival Glass has been around for years, but they didn't really start marking their pieces until 1951. And this is the logo that they used. It's a capital G superimposed on a stylized I. They sold off the company in 1972. So all of the marked imperial pieces were from that period, 1951 to 1972. You can also tell the base color of your carnival glass by looking on the bottom. This particular color is called smoke. And the pattern is the rose pattern. I just think it's gorgeous. When I found these, the sugar bowl did not have a lid. But as I was walking around the store, someplace else, there was the lid. So I got these two pieces for 14 plus 20 percent off. So yay! Couldn't believe that. That same day, I picked up this it's a really nice vintage tin. If you turn it around, you can see the back side is faded. It must have been in the sun. And it says Chinco. It's J. Shin and Company. J. Shin and Company, made in Burlington, New Jersey. I know, I thought Vermont also. Anyway, these are relatively old. I want to say 50s to 70s. There's no barcode on them, and I thought that was a great piece. I paid half of this. I paid $2.50 for that particular piece. Okay, this little guy, he looks, he's made in Japan, so again, he's probably 1950s, and I think he's part of a Sleeping Beauty set. I think he's one of the dwarfs. I think he's sleepy. Look at his eyes. But I looked all over that store, and I couldn't find any other pieces. I think I paid 50 cents for him. These are two neat pieces. Uh, I think they're vintage, and I think it, they're somewhat collectible. Anyway, a buck. I got a tip from Heather of the Paper Castle channel on YouTube years ago to look for coffee mugs because they sell really well. So when I find some interesting looking coffee mugs, I look them up quickly and I purchase them. And all of these I paid 50 cents to a dollar for. But the piece de la resistance from the Goodwill this past week was this vintage horse tricycle. Now, this is a reproduction. It's obviously a reproduction. But these are based off an, of an original Victorian era tricycle. So they had $50 on it, and I wheeled it up to the front and had them hold it. $50 was too much, but ironically, the cashier told me that all household goods were 50% off that day. So she went and checked with the manager, and the manager said yes, that this was a decor piece, and they would give it to me for 50% off. So I paid $25 for it, which is really pretty good. If you look on eBay, people try to pawn these off as antiques. It's not the case. 
you can tell. You should be able to tell. The p quality of the painting and the carving is just not that good. I think these people need a lesson in horse anatomy. Um, now it does have a leather saddle, which is really nice. It does have the cast iron support, but on the originals, these are sanded and filed off so that they're very nice and smooth. These are very rough. The wheels are not correct either. The, this is very soft wood, just a little bit of metal, and probably wouldn't hold up to the rigors of a child riding the bicycle. But the nice thing is it makes a nice display piece, and it does have actually real horse hair in the back. So $25 was really good. Um, on eBay, they sell for anywhere from $50 up to $200. Don't buy them if they're trying to tell you it's worth $600, $1,000. It's just not. Some yard sale finds for the weekend of August 22nd and 23rd, 2015. So... We went to Bob's, and it was the first day of the sale, so we only bought a couple of items. One is this really nice vintage Coca-Cola thermometer. This is from the 50s. It's in great shape. It works. He had $30 on it, but we bundled it with this kind of primitive folk art hand-carved fish. Across the street from Bob, there is another collector. And from him, I got this primitive five-tine cultivator. I don't know. I'm thinking you can put that up on the wall, use that for a towel rack pot rack, hanging a picture, something cool like that, some decor type of a piece. And then I also got this hay sickle from him. This is a neat wall hanger piece. And this really interesting piece, it's a 1940s tractor nose cone off of an international harvester, either farm all or McCormick brand tractor. Really, really neat. It's not in great condition, but none of these are. I paid $20 for it, and online these sell for $100. Pretty neat, eh? Now it is missing the nameplate or the badge. It would have said IH for International Harvester. You can buy those on eBay, but we go to a lot of farm sales in the area, so it's possible that I'll find one at one of those sales. But other than that, I think it's really cool. What am I going to use it for? I do not have the foggiest idea. I'm open to suggestions. Usually my game plan is to turn it into seating, a plant stand, or a table. But it's not very flat, so I don't think it will work for any of those. So let me know if you have some interesting idea. Okay, last up, things we got from the neighbors. My neighbor is a dealer, or at least was a dealer, and periodically has yard sales. And we always stop by to see what he's got. And in this case, he had this really nice miniature milk glass oil lamp. It has the chimney. These things break and they're difficult to replace, as well as this backing, which is a reflector. So this is a really nice piece. I tell people if you're just out and you're looking at oil lamps, one way to determine if it's old, can you come in, Uncle Venti? Yeah. Is to look at the handle on the burner. Most of the pieces aren't going to be marked on the bottom of the lamp, but the burners are marked. And a common antique and vintage burner is P&A Manufacturing Company, 
So if you find that on your land, you know that it's relatively old. So I picked this up, I paid 15 for it. I collect these, so that was a good buy for me. Then he gave me a nice oyster tin distributed by Brill Seafood Company, Baltimore, Maryland. It's in great shape, has the lid. And then for free, I got this, and he gave us something else. We can't even remember what it was, but we got this really neat old oil can. So I know we got a Dietz lantern from him, but I can't remember. He gave us something else. I don't remember. We don't remember. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for the yard sale show for this week. We'll be back soon with more yard sale finds.